Hey everyone and welcome back to some more Battle Brothers. So, in this episode there's going to be less talking and more action. And our next step is to travel to Hogarth's Refuge. And collect our bounty. After killing Hogarth, that is. We could use some extra gear, but we should get some gear from this fight. So, we got a few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. And here we are, looks like they started with some high ground. That's not good. We should probably move up to the high ground then. Alright, step up to the high ground. And there's no need to waste fatigue for spear wall actually. Not yet, they are not close enough to move into this guy's melee range on their next turn. Okay then. Yeah, let's be careful here. We'll just form a line and wait for them to move into our range. As for our ranged guy... Well, shooting from the long round is not very useful, is it? No, it's not. We need to move him into a better position. Maybe down here? That wouldn't be a bad idea. We can give that a shot. And the other guy from the other direction, perhaps? We'll see how that goes. Also, you can move camera up and down a level, like so. If it's not quite clear which level is which, because sometimes it isn't. It can be a little bit hard to tell. Anyway, let's form that line. Oh yeah, also, I swapped the helm between the ranged guy and the melee guy, because this one actually reduces vision by one. And we don't want that. Not on ranged, obviously. So, from the line, it's not perfect, but it will do. And since we got a guy with a shield and a spear next, we might as well attack the thug, engage him. And we can hit him with frost. We got how much? 78% chance to hit. And 20% of that is because we are using a spear. Spears are so good early on, unfortunately we missed. Okay then. That will do. And we can move in with others. Now, the most important thing when you're fighting pretty much anything is to not get surrounded. So we will do our best to not get surrounded. Hmm, let's actually wait. Move this guy to the end of the queue. And next we got the two-hander. Yeah, let's move him to the end of the queue as well. And what's our chance to hit? 17%, that's too low. We need to move into a better position. 20%. Nope. Alright, that's fine. 5%, yeah, we need to move to the high ground. How's this? Too low, we need to flank them a little bit. Probably on the next turn. But stay away, we don't want anyone to move into melee. Okay, we can move one tile and then still attack with the 200. So let's just play it safe. I don't want to get attacked just yet. At least not on anyone who's not using a shield. And now, Frost again. You can use keyboard shortcuts, by the way. That's what I will be doing most of the time, because it's just much faster, obviously. And we actually got knocked back. How rude. Well, we can try to do the same with this guy. But actually, let's just try to hit him. Yeah, that's not too bad. Alright. And engage this guy before he attacks our ranged. He should go down pretty easily. Hmm. How's our armor? 30 and 20. Yeah, that's a little bit bad. In fact, that's kind of really bad. I don't want to engage this dude just yet. 
so how's our chance to hit? 21% with the 200, yep, that's really low. Mostly because this guy's skill is crap, I think. 51, not exactly good, but hey, let's try. We actually hit him, very nice. We almost killed him on spot. That's what I said in the previous episode, 200s hit for a lot of damage. You can kill a lot of dudes with one hit if you use a 200. Okay, one more hit on the Brigand Thug. Maybe not this time. Alright then. That will do. This fight should be fairly easy. Come on. There we go. <laughs> we chopped his head off. Didn't he have 20% chance to hit? Well, apparently he hit. Twice in a row even. Come on, finish them off already. And let's keep this dude in the back, because his armor is really bad. And he doesn't have a shield, we'll just keep him safe. He did his job already. Alright. So... Move back up. And that's pretty much it. And I think we should move away with our crossbowman as well. Wouldn't want him to get killed. And actually, let's try to engage that other guy with the bow. We'll give that a shot. And move out of the way. Almost done. What's our chance to hit the archer? We can't actually hit him, can we? Not yet. 14%. Yep, that's really bad. Nope. Hey, it was worth a try. And move into his melee. We got this in the bag. And no one died. We didn't even take that much damage. Because sometimes... You will get various injuries if you take a lot of damage. And there are even permanent injuries. Which can be really annoying. So if you can, you might want to avoid taking too much damage. Obviously, sometimes it's just unavoidable. And also, if you're going to pick up Battle Brothers, be warned. Your characters will die as you play. That's just completely unavoidable. It's a thing that happens. So if you're the kind of person who likes to have flawless runs with no deaths, that's not really going to happen in Battle Brothers. <laughs> Consider yourself warned. Sometimes you will just get unlucky and die instantly to a dude with a 200, for example. It just happens. Anyway, we won. We got some experience. No one really got seriously wounded. And we got a lot. Let's have a look. We got some food. We got a signet ring. We try to find a town that will give us a good price for it. We got some money, some tools and supplies, ammunition. We got a short bow. A wooden shield, another shield, and yet another shield. And we got patched mail shirt, which has 80 armor or 90 armor. That's pretty good. After the battle. So now we need to go and get our payment. Yep. Back we go then. We'll get 400. So we'll have almost 1000 still. Return to Sonheim. We got 400 crowns. And there is another contract here. But let's maybe wait with that a little bit. First, let's check the gear. So, this dude. What's his skill? 53. That is pretty low. Still better than some others, actually. We need more spears. And maybe another 200. It is nice to have 200s, you just need to be careful to not die. Unfortunately, no one got any level up just yet. But we are getting close. 154 out of 200. One more fight should give us a few level ups. Looking forward to it. 
Well, anyway, we need a weapon for this guy because we don't actually have a weapon right now. Unless I grab a backup weapon from our archer. It's not a very good one, but it will do for now. It's just temporary. Until we buy something better. And I assume we'll buy something better. Alright then. So, let's maybe visit some other town. Or we can wait. Because we can't do much in the middle of the night. Unfortunately. We have to wait. We got 14 supplies, 40 ammunition, 20 medical supplies, and 48 provisions. That should be enough for now. Let's go and check out Windberg. What does it have? Sometimes you can figure it out. There's the blast furnace. Okay. Doesn't look like it has a whole lot. Good to know. We want to find towns with a Fletcher, with an Armorer, and with a Weaponsmith. It's not really a huge priority, because most of the good weapons and armor are quite expensive. We won't be able to afford them for a while, but it will be good to know where they are. Oh, there's an Armorer right here. Okay, then. I might buy something, we'll see. Now, most of the time, you actually have to buy the best gear in this game. Yes, you will get loot from various encounters, but the best gear is usually bought, not looted. And it's quite expensive, as you can see. Yeah, worth 7,000. We would have to pay almost 10,000 in here. How much can we sell the signet ring for? 234, so just under its standard value, okay. Oh, and there's also a weaponsmith in here. So this town is perfect. It has both an armored smith and a weaponsmith. Does he have any spears that we can actually afford? That would be a no. Yeah, these are obviously a little bit too expensive for us at the moment. Let's check the market then. Do you have a spear? Yes, you do. It's at 47%, but I guess we'll repair it. So, should we sell the ring or wait for a slightly better price? We can probably get a better price, but... 234 is not terrible. In any case, I will definitely grab the spear and I think we should grab some tools and supplies. 228 is a decent price. I've seen tools and supplies go for as much as 300. So, 228 is not that bad. Could have been worse. And maybe a little bit of food. Let's grab the cheapest. Alright, and I think that will do. We should be fine on everything else. So, back to gear. And we also need some more headgear. But first, the spear. Like so. And give the knife to one of our other guys. The nice thing about knives is that they don't lower your maximum fatigue. Because most weapons do. Spear lowers it by 6, for example, but knives do not. So we can keep them on any ranged guys, so that they will be able to use them in melee. It can be quite useful. Right, we need one more hat. Or maybe even two more, I would say. The guy in the back could use something cheap. So let's have a look. Minus two maximum fatigue. Yeah, this one. Throw hard. It's not exactly amazing, but it doesn't affect any stats other than armor, obviously. So that's what we want for our ranged people. And we have 532 gold left. Not a whole lot. So let's go for something cheap. Just a regular hood. It's always something. I don't want to go overboard, because we'll probably have to hire more people. In fact, let's check our potential recruits. Shepherd, Apprentice... 170. It's not a bad price. 160, and he will require 7 per day. Alright, let's grab this guy. 
By the way, I will probably rename some of these dudes, but I will be doing that between the episodes. So, not right now. And not just yet. Oh, nice! He has two stars in melee skill. Very nice. Okay. We'll be keeping him. And maybe give him the gear. Keep the other guy in reserve for now. You will grab the armor, the spear, the shield, and the hood. Okay, looks good. That leaves us with one straw hat, which is fine. You can grab it for now. What's your ranged skill? 38. That's a little bit low. He does have one star in ranged skill. But 38? That is kind of bad. Compared to, let's say, 52 on this guy. So, let's not sell the ring just yet. We can always sell it later. I'm sure we can get a slightly better price somewhere. And as you can see, we cannot accept contracts in this town. Because our reputation isn't good enough. We aren't worthy of their attention. <laughs> okay, let's go back to Sonheim then. Or we could visit that town on the island. We could do that, yeah. But we can always do it later. Let's stay on the road. Because we will move a little bit faster when following the road. Oh yeah, so now we have to pick our ambition. Ambition is kind of like a long-term quest, something you have to do. You can cancel an ambition and pick a different one, but then your brothers will be disappointed with your leadership. So it's good to choose wisely. So our options here is to recruit more brothers, up to 12. I think we are close to 12. Don't we have 10 or 11? Yeah, let's grab that one. We have 10, so we just need two more. Good enough. So, Sonheim. Let's do the contract. What is it? Let's talk about money. 410. We need to get paid more for this. 420. Secure Forefather Cemetery. And we'll get 420. Okay, I accept. Down here, let's go. I likely won't do contracts all the time, we will do some roaming. But it's a good idea to do a few early on. We need money. We only got 243 at the moment, that's not great. So, how's our company looking like? Pierced side. Maybe we should swap him out then. But he has 52 ranged skill. No one is even remotely close to that. I think this will have to do. Yeah, it will have to do. I'm just going to rearrange them slightly. Alright, let's do this. What will we have to fight? We don't know. Probably some undead. Yep. Oh, I know what these things do, but I won't spoil the surprise. <laughs> they don't have any armor, but that doesn't mean they are not dangerous. Trust me. So. Let's move forward slightly. Yep, there are quite a few back there, and we'll set up with a spear wall. And then we'll just let them attack us. Didn't do any damage there. They got eight. Right. So let's be careful with anyone who doesn't have a shield. In fact, I'll move that guy to the end of the queue. And what's our chance to hit? It's really crap. Yeah, this guy's ranged skill simply isn't good enough. I might have to give him some melee weapons. That's probably what I'll end up doing, give him a spear. He'll be kind of useless until he levels up his ranged skill. 40% with the crossbow, that's much better. 
And we hit, just not the one we were targeting, alright. That's still good enough. And let's form the line. And spear wall, because they will definitely attack. Keep this guy slightly out of range. Like so. And same with the other dude. We can move into the high ground. This is high ground, yep. High ground bonuses are pretty damn good, by the way. If you can get high ground, you definitely should. It's really damn important. So how about we try to do some damage here now? Okay then. Let's try something like this and spear wall. Okay, and more high ground. Let's see what's going to happen now. We almost killed one, we almost killed two, technically. Okay. Our frontline guys should be fine, unless we get really unlucky with rolls. Because sometimes RNG will just screw you over it. <laughs> but hey, I'm used to that. I played way over 1000 hours of XCOM. So I'm more than used to getting bad RNG rolls. Bring it on, I say. And that missed, unfortunately. That was to be expected. Still only 20% chance, but we might as well take that shot. Yeah, we actually hit. Okay. 62%. Nope. Unfortunate. And with the crossbow? Yeah, we need to move if we want to hit with the crossbow. So let's maybe do that. To the side. And try to kill the wounded. Nope. Still no, really? There we go, another one down. Actually, that's the first kill, isn't it? Yeah, it pretty much is. Here's another one. And... Come on, really? You missed twice in a row? Alright, fine. Our armor is gone. Not good. Yeah, we need to watch out here. Marby Ward. Killing these two quickly. Yep, we are close to losing some people. But like I said, death is just something that happens in this game. Another one down, let's back up. I'll try to avoid losses where possible, obviously. 46%, nice. Alright, move in with the two-hander. Nope. There, that's better. Actually, didn't this guy have a weapon? A backup weapon? No, I don't think so. Alright. Well, let's just move to the side. What do we focus on? Only one target here. We could try to knock him back. No, there are two targets. We still missed. Quite a lot of misses so far. I don't like that. Now, I think it's best if we use shield wall on Godhart because, yeah, his armor is a little bit low and his headgear is almost destroyed. Although, we got 73% chance to hit. There. And we can use shield wall with the other move. Sounds good. And now, if we use a shield wall with a guy that's adjacent to him, he will get a higher bonus. You get additional plus 5 defense against all attacks for each ally adjacent, also using shield wall. So you can literally form a shield wall. It's not just the name. <laughs> That's literally what it can do. Nice. And nope. Also, you didn't see their special ability just yet. I'm not sure if they are going to use it at some point. But basically, they can kind of eat corpses and make themselves stronger. Maybe they won't actually do it here, but they can certainly do that. It can really catch you off guard if you don't expect it. Also, I probably shouldn't have moved in there. <laughs> no, that was not a brilliant idea, actually. Missed twice. Okay. There, he's down. Nice. We are almost done. Looking good. And block the way. No casualties yet. 
that's promising. I think we can do this with no losses whatsoever. But don't get me wrong, deaths happen in this game, and they will happen. It's just unavoidable. Especially if you get unlucky. Right, you will stay back here. We wouldn't want you to die, would we? Nineteen percent. Yo, we actually hit! Good job, and we got some level ups. On Free Brothers, nice. Let's check the lot. Not a lot of lot, some jagged fangs and crowns. But hey, money is always a good thing. And let's go back and get our reward, but first, let's use some level ups. So here's one thing that I didn't talk about yet, because I didn't really have a chance to. Perks! There are a lot of perks, and they are divided into tiers. Right now, we are level 2, so we can only pick up from the first row. When we level up again, we'll get to pick from the next row, and then from the next one, the next one, and so on. You can see that this row is locked until one more perk is spent, this row is locked until two more perks are spent, then three, four, five, and six. And perks can really change how you play that character a lot. I'm not familiar with the most optimal builds just yet, because I've not played that much, but there are certainly some really tough choices in here, and some really interesting perks. And there are a few perks that you will usually want to pick up on most of your brothers, like for example Student is one that's always worth picking up, you will get additional experience. So I generally always pick up Student either first or second. And we will grab Student. Right here. And then one of the other really nice perks is Gifted. That basically gives you an instant level up. It can be really nice when you recruit some new brothers and you need them to catch up quickly. And every time we level up, we get to spend some points to raise our attributes. We can raise three different attributes. And as you remember, I talked about talented skills in the first episode. And these skills will get more attribute points when you level them up compared to if they didn't have talents. So we will definitely level up the melee skill. That's 65. You can't do it more than once per level. So this is the only increase that we'll get. We will also increase melee defense because that's a really important stat. And we can also increase resolve. It's a good idea to have at least around 50 resolve so that your brothers won't break too easily because you don't want them to panic. That's bad. But first, let's increase maximum fatigue a bit, because fatigue is just so important in this game. Next up, we got Erhard. Let's have a look. He has two stars in hit points. Okay, we can increase his health a little bit. His weapon skill, and he already has 8 in melee defense. Let's raise his fatigue then. And we'll pick up student. I will pick up student on everyone right now. And one more, Arn the Butcher. Let's see. Oh yeah, he's our ranged guy with the crossbow. Okay. So obviously ranged skill, probably ranged defense. This guy is likely going to be one of our best ranged. Because he has starts in ranged skill, ranged defense and initiative. That's quite good. Alright, looks good. We do have a few wounded brothers. Let's see, light wounds one day, deep abdominal cut up to four days, deep chest cut up to six days. Pierced side up to four days, yep, not great. I'll swap the gear around a little bit later. I'll probably do some gear swapping between the episodes because I don't want to bore you with micromanagement too much. And we got 420 crowns. And the town no longer has terrified villagers. Which means they will be more excited to deal with us, let's just say. What's the price we can get here for the ring? 225, so actually a worse price than before. It's okay, we'll wait until we get a better deal. And I think this is a good moment to make a cut. I'm going to continue in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.